Hi, it's Noisy Andrew and welcome to the internet. Last Saturday, the Machinery Preservation Club of Western Australia had an open day at the Midland Workshops. This is their club rooms and it's also the club rooms of a number of other societies as well. We jumped on our bicycles, cycled out to Midland uh, early, nice and early in the morning to have a look. And the first thing we came across as we walked in the door or the gate was this absolutely fabulous micro camper. This is handmade by its owner and quite frankly, better than a bought one, better than a bought one. It has a sticker on it saying built, not bought. He also obviously built this beautiful trike. It's been across the Nullarbor a few times, uh, been tested and it was fabulous. But we were really here to see machines like this. The Machinery Preservation Club of Western Australia actually owns this traction engine. I love watching reciprocating machinery moving backwards and forwards. It's hypnotic, it's very zen. Uh, this eccentric is actually driving a water pump for the boiler. Obviously, as you boil the water away to make power, you need to replace that water, and that's what this little red eccentric is busy doing. Anyway, on a few occasions during the day, they got it out and drove it round. Uh, you wouldn't want to get in the way of this. I think it would just keep going at its very slow, steady speed. And obviously, where you see large, beautifully made machines, you'll see miniature beautifully made machines by people in fantastic shirts. The Northern District's uh, Model Engineering Club was there um, and they had a small display, this beautiful beam engine happily beaming away and a little uh, loco which runs on their uh, miniature, I, I think it might be seven inch, I, I should have measured and asked. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't put a bit of track down and run this up and down actually, but anyway. This machine is a hot bulb motor and the way it works is you use an external flame to heat up a bulb and then when you squirt the fuel into that red hot bulb it vaporizes. Once the engine's running um, that heat will be maintained and you can turn your flame off uh, but this isn't doing any work so it's needing the flame to keep it going I suspect. Love the way it rocks around. Obviously if you'd made it do some work it would stay hot enough to uh, do its thing. Uh, so. This is how you make stuff do work. This is a small petrol stationary engine driving a water pump. Doing some work. This is a fabricated steam engine. Most steam engines are cast and machined. There's obviously fabricated parts inside them, but this one is fully fabricated. And the thing about it that's amazing is it has rotary valves driven by a chain. And the thing about the chain is you can change the geometry of the chain to change the cut off of the valves and make it go backwards or forwards. I believe at one point this was in the back of a Hilux ute and connected to its diff so it could drive around just for the sake of fun. The mathematics behind this just impressed me so much. Pause the video if you want to read this. Of course, every Victorian machinery uh, display needs a Victorian steampunk Dalek. I believe this uh, steampunk Dalek is actually for hire. You can hire this Dalek and its driver creator to come to your corporate or party function and tell everybody that they are to be exterminated. Um, I will post a link uh, to the sculptor's website and contact de details below. He uh, does some absolutely beautiful work. The Dalek has three separate cameras in it and a vocorder so that it actually sounds like a Dalek. Hard to tell here because everything else is so noisy around it. And I'm only filming this on my phone. At the front of the display, there was this Austin taxi. Made in the early 1940s, it actually served in North Africa, and in fact, the one of the ventilators on top has a anti-tank rifle bullet round uh, wedged in it. Uh, the guy that uh, was displaying it had basically restored it from rubbish, um, and he's done a really beautiful job. 
Evidently, at one point, it had 22 wounded in it. There are two types of ambulances in the army, one to take wounded men from the battlefield to the aid station, and the other one to take them from the aid station to the actual hospital. Uh, the big meaty tires on this one shows that it's the type that went onto the battlefield to grab wounded and take them to the aid station. A prize to anybody who knows what unit the platypus on the boomerang is. And why does the Arabic number not match the English number? That seems puzzling to me. A bunch of motorcycle fans bought their beautiful old 1970s and before motorcycles to show off uh, just outside the club rooms. And there were some absolutely lovely old bikes here. The uh, Kawasaki and the Suzuki coming up. Uh, they're the sort of bikes that killed young people if they didn't know what they were doing because these are all 750cc two strokes uh, with um, rubber and suspension that probably didn't really know much about the amount of power that was going through the back wheel. Two stroke motors, much more powerful than four stroke motors, especially in those days. Inside the club room, there's a model of the Midland workshops as they would have been at their peak. Uh, unfortunately, it was hard getting some video for this because of all the reflections on the glass cabinet that it was in. Luckily, just round the corner, I found a large overhead photo, huge overhead photo, probably A0 in size, uh, that showed the workshops with all its railway tracks. They were big. A lot of industry happened here. And the bit just here, round about there somewhere in the middle, is where Bunnings now is. Thanks for watching the video. Please consider subscribing or dropping me a like. And if you're interested in board gamey type stuff, I have another channel, Party Meeple channel, where I talk about board games and board game adjacent things. Please consider dropping over and having a look at that as well.